Proudly we hail. And now another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. I believe this program is going to be one of our finest, a combination of a tender, moving story together with some truly beautiful music. We'll begin our play in just a moment after a word from Ken Banghart. The United States Army and the United States Air Force urgently need young men and young women. If you volunteer right away, you'll have the choice of many jobs now open. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Be a volunteer. Serve yourself and your country now. And now, Lee, our play. Ken, this story appealed to me the moment I first read the script. It's a story of a beautiful girl who creates beautiful music. And she, well, Ken... Let's begin. With our star, Lee Tracy, in the role of David, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Concerto. If you were to drive along the mountain road heading east on the new superhighway, You'd come around a wide, swinging curve, and there above you, tucked into the pine-thatched brow of a long, sloping hill, you'd see the house. Here, the wind moves through fir and hemlock. They bow their heads and whisper at your approach. Behind the hill, the mountain towers, and above it, thunderheads mutter ominously. The man who built this place made it a part of the scenery, not an intruder on it. Flowers and shrubs border its sides. Morning glories and rambler roses grow in profusion along its walls. A single glass window accounts for nearly half the length of the house. And from behind that window comes the sound of a piano. Someone is playing music, beautiful and haunting. Who lives here? Let us enter and find out. Francesca? Yes, Dad? I'm sorry to interrupt your work, but are you sure you'll be all right without me? Oh, of course I'll be all right. Anything you'd like me to get you? You can check and see if those books I ordered have come. Oh? What books? Oh, I thought my library could stand some additions. I've just about worn the pages off of some of those things. Oh, well, I'll check and see if they've arrived. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Stewart. Have a good time. I'm on my way, Katie. Don't you worry none. No, I'll try not to. Katie, beautiful Katie. It is me very own sweet self that's here. Uh -huh. Sounds like a big storm coming <laughs> up. I can feel it in the air. Oh, you can indeed. We're going to get it all right. Will you see that all the windows are closed, Katie? That I will. And aren't you thinking this time you were taking yourself a bit of a rest, working that hard all the afternoon? Oh, have I been, Katie? Mm -hmm. Funny how quickly time goes when we're busy. Let's hear what the radio has to offer. I'll turn it on. Would you like to hear something in particular? No, I'll settle for anything. We'll be brought up for a vote first thing tomorrow. Now, here's more on the prison break. The bulletin just in says the two men made their getaway in a stolen car. Police have set up roadblocks throughout the area... And have asked motorists to be on the lookout for license number JK406. The two men, both serving life terms, shot and killed the guard early this afternoon while working in a stone quarry outside the prison wall. The prisoners, Stanley Wolf and David Wilson, are reportedly armed. Turn it off, Katie. It's too much static and nothing very pleasant to hear anyway. I heard all about it earlier. A couple of devils they must be. And you know that prison is just over the other side of this valley, only 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry about it. The police will catch them before they get far. Yeah, they'd better. I don't like murderers running around <laughs> loose. Don't worry, Katie. I'll protect you. <laughs> <laughs> now, who could be calling us? Maybe Mr. Stockton, that manager fella. 
I, uh, I know a good way to find out. You stay right there. <laughs> I'll answer it. <laughs> Thunder, are you applauding or booing? Ooh, you don't say. Well, how do you like this? Mm-hmm, you reserve judgment. Well, that's kind of you. <laughs> what am I going to do? What a terrible thing. Oh, my poor sister Nelly, she... Oh, dear, oh, dear. What oh, Katie, happened? Katie, get a hold of yourself. Now, what's the trouble? What happened to Nelly? She... She and Jack, they've been in an automobile accident. Nelly is in the hospital, hurt bad. Oh, Katie, that's awful. What hospital is it? Midland. That was Jack. He's all banged up, too. Oh, what can I do? Oh, well, first sit down and try to calm down. Well, then you'd better take the station wagon and drive to Midland, and you'd better plan to spend the night there. Jack won't be much help, and you'll have to take care of their children. And leave you here all alone. Then why not? I'm quite capable of taking care of myself, and Dad will be here later. I, uh, I just couldn't be doing this to you. The storm's coming, and... Well, suppose... Suppose nothing. Now, do you think I mind a storm or being alone? Now, you can leave me some supper on a tray, and I'll sit right here and work. No, no, I'll not be leaving Listen, you. Katie, that's very kind and very loyal of you, but this is an emergency. And you'll do a lot more good taking care of Jack and the children. I'm not an invalid or a baby. Now, you better hurry and leave before the storm breaks. What would your father say? He'll understand perfectly. You're wasting time, Katie. Fix me something light and, and get started. It's a terrible choice I have. My sister... Oh, I suppose you're right. Yes. You're a dear girl. Sure, and I wouldn't be wanting to be left alone with the thunder cracking and the wind howling through the trees. <laughs> there. I said, who's there? No need for alarm. Who are you? What do you want? Question one, let's just say I'm a lonely wayfarer a long way from home. Question two, I want to get out of the storm. Why do you stand over there? Because it's dark over here. This way you won't be so frightened. I'm not frightened. And what does the dark have to do with it? Oh, most people who see my face can't bear a second look unless they can't believe the first. What's the matter with your face? Well, let's just say it's, it's a kind of a mess and let it go at that. What difference does that make? A person can't help how he looks. You're so understanding. And a person can't help how other people react to the way he looks. Well, since you've decided to stay until the storm is over, you might as well sit down. You're very, very kind. Are you here all alone? Yes. Would you mind checking and seeing if the windows are all shut? Do you mind if I make an observation? I'm sure you'd make it whether I mind it or not. <laughs> You're right. You're a very pretty and a very lazy woman. Such flattery. It's quite a storm. Quite a view, too. Look at the way the lightning snakes across the valley. I'm surprised you don't insist upon having all the lights on. Aren't you afraid of being in the dark with a strange man? Sometimes I'm afraid of being in the dark. But I'm not afraid of you or any man. Ha <laughs> ha. Bravo. <laughs> What's so funny? If you're not afraid of me, why do you keep looking over there to the chair? It couldn't be that if you saw me clearly, you... Or did, did you see my face in a lightning flash? No, I, I haven't seen your face. I just thought you were sitting over there. Look, it's not that dark in here. From here, it's dark everywhere. What do you mean? You're not very observing, are you? Haven't you noticed? I'm blind. 
You can't see at all? Not with my eyes. Well, how is it you're all alone? You can't live here all by yourself. No, there's my father and Katie, our housekeeper. Dad had to go out, and Katie's sister was in an automobile accident, so I let her go home. Doesn't it bother you to be alone? Why should it? Who would want to harm me? Besides, I'm not really alone. What? What do you mean? Who's here beside us? <laughs> now, it's you who are frightened. I meant I have this. And I have my books and the radio. What's that you're playing? The concerto I'm trying to compose. Well, how you, how, how, how can you do that when, when you can't see? <laughs> my fingers aren't blind, nor my ears, nor my mind. Have you always been blind? For the last ten years. No chance to see again? None. Uh, it must be tough. You mind if I turn on the radio? You'll get nothing but static. I tried it earlier. You didn't happen to hear any news, did you? Only about the two men who escaped from prison. Oh. What about the two men who escaped from prison? Nothing. I, I couldn't hear very much of it. I... You don't say. What did you say your name was? I didn't say. But you can call me... David. Lee Tracy, starring as David in the proudly we hail production of Concerto, will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, I have a message for the real red blooded young men in our audience. As a paratrooper in the United States Army, you will have an exciting career that you'll be proud of. Your distinctive paratrooper uniform and silver wings distinguish you as a member of the Army's most highly respected outfits. Yes, if you can pass the rigid airborne training, you can win your paratrooper wings, a badge of achievement among men in uniform. Volunteer for the United States Airborne today. Get full details at your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy as David and featuring John Guarneri at the piano, we present the second act of Concerto. You know, you seem different somehow. When you broke in here, you weren't quite so relaxed or at ease, were you? You stood in a dark corner in fear that I might see you too clearly. Now that you know I'm blind, everything is fine and dandy. You become gay and debonair. A blind girl is nice company. Completely helpless. She can't do you a bit of harm. You even praise her concerto. Look, take it easy. I'm just a bum on his way to nowhere. Of course, it's a relief to know that you can't see me. If you could, you'd be yelling bloody murder. I don't doubt that. Your uh, face, I believe you said it was. What's the matter with it, exactly? Oh, it was a pretty good face once. At least people didn't go under their beds when I came around. Then one day, it made the mistake of getting in the way of a dynamite blast. One of those things that wasn't supposed to go off, but it did. When the smoke cleared away, I didn't look very pretty. You've uh, heard of plastic surgery. You've heard of money. You mean the people you were working for wouldn't... It happened in South America. The company took care of all the doctor bills, but there wasn't anyone around who knew how to put a face back together. Let me feel your face. What? What, what do you mean? I want to see for myself. I can see with my fingers. You can go to the devil. <laughs> Yours is a tale that grips my heart, Mr. Uh, Adams, I think you said it was. Tell me, what kind of work were you doing when this terrible thing happened to you? I was building a bridge, Miss... Uh... What's your name, anyway? <laughs> we haven't been formally introduced, have we? Forgive me. 
Most of my guests usually know who I am before they come to call. We've always felt it was a good basis to start on. My name is Francesca Stewart. Francesca? Huh. Sounds like your music. I think it's a beautiful name. <laughs> you are a very noble man. And you, Francesca, are a very sarcastic young lady. And you, Mr. Adams, are an out-and-out -out liar. And why should I lie to you? What do I gain? Time, perhaps. Yeah. Tell me, Francesca, are you famous? You, you know, uh, you, uh, what do they call them? Concert, uh, concert pianist? Quite. My blindness has been a great selling card. Have you heard, my dear? That blind girl is giving a concert. Oh, you know the one I mean. They do say she plays very well. I wonder how she does it. Poor thing. It isn't so much being blind. It's being lonely. You have a beautiful talent and an empty heart. An empty heart? And who is there to fill it? You don't love a blind woman. You, you pity her. You pity her, Francesca. What business is it of yours what I do? Get out of here and leave me alone, you... You murderer? Murderer? That's not a very nice... Thing to call a person. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm sitting down beside you. I'm taking your hand and mine, like this. And I'm going to tell you some things you've never been told before. You let me go. There. Let me go. Now, 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 oh, Francesca. Please. Don't you know I wouldn't harm you? <laughs> When this storm is all gone, I'll go. But because I'm a strange voice to you, someone who walked in out of the night, let me have my say. Francesca, you're, you're like your music, haunting, enchanting. From without, you're something like this house that looks out over the valley, distant, a, a bit uh, aloof. Lonely and untouchable. You know, I haven't known very many women, but any other woman would have screamed bloody murder when I walked in here, whether she could see me or not. You didn't. You have courage, Francesca, and spirit. You're not defeated. I wish I had half your courage. You make me feel small. If I had a life to offer, you're the kind of a woman I'd offer it to. But I have nothing. I'm just a voice to you. I came out of the night unexpected and unwelcome, and I'll go back into it again. But someday, Francesca, you'll meet a man who will kiss the loneliness from your lips, and there'll be no pity in his love for you. Well, good night, Francesca. I'll hear your music. Wait. I, I don't understand. Who are you? Nobody, Francesca. Nobody at all. But you... Why did you say those things to me? No one ever said such things to me before. Give them a chance. They will. David, tell me the truth. Are you... What's the matter? I hear someone coming. I'll duck out the back way. Goodbye, Francesca. David, wait. Wait, don't go. David? David? No, it ain't David, baby. They've already got David. They ain't gonna get me. Who? who Never mind who. Just sit down there and shut up. Who's here beside you? I said who's here beside you? You told me to shut up. Oh, wanna be cute, huh? <gasps> now, who's here beside you? No, no nobody. That uh, better not be. This little thing in my hand shoots real bullets. You, you get out of this house. 
<laughs> real wild cat, ain't you? If you don't behave, I'll get real tough. Help! Help! Add up! You just don't learn, do you? Let, let go of me, you... Just call me Stan, baby. Stan Wolf. Just a wolf at heart. Help! Help! Oh, 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 don't fight me, will you? You oh, little dick! Oh, oh. Francesca, oh, what's the matter? Oh, Why, oh, you... Oh, oh. Oh. David. David, where are you? Over here. Oh. oh. Here. You're hurt. You're hurt. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Who? Who was he? Oh, never mind that now. Oh, David, you weren't lying to me, were you? Not to you, Francesca. Not to you. David. Oh, David. <laughs> Young fellow, how do you feel today? Fine, Doc. Almost as good as new. You're rugged. A couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't have placed any bets on you. Well, I'm not much to bet on. But with your daughter to sit here and hold my hand, how could I lose? <laughs> Dave, maybe I've gone a bit too far. But after what you did to protect Francesca, well, I... I... Dave, I've got a good friend in New York... He's one of the finest plastic surgeons in the country. I wrote to him about you, talked to him on the phone just the other day, and he wants to help you. Once you get back on your feet and have a job, you can pay him back. Think you'd be interested? Well, I'd be an awful dope, Doc, if I wasn't. You know, I... Well... <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> thanks. As soon as you feel fit to travel, we'll make the arrangements. How about right now? There now, Mr. Adams, I think we've got everything. Sure, and you know, Katie, old girl, you're after being the apple of me eye. <laughs> Go on with you now. Any man who'd risk his own neck for my Francesca and help catch a murdering devil, sure, and you've got a friend in Katie O'Hara. You know, when you said your name was David, the poor child thought... Just glad that that I am to be having your friendship, me lovely Colleen. <laughs> and remember, not every David in the world is serving time in prison. Are you sure your name is Adams? It wouldn't be O'Leary now. Oh, Adams, Katie. <laughs> yeah, oh, Adams. <laughs> well, you tell that doctor in New York when he gives you a new face to put a touch of Irish. Ha! <laughs> I'll do that, Katie. <laughs> I'd better be getting back to my kitchen. Goodbye, Katie. And thanks for everything. Goodbye, and luck go with you. Come back soon, real soon. Hello there, you. David. You're, you're going now? Yeah. What will you do when it's all over? I, I mean, once you're out of the hospital. Get a job. <laughs> Building bridges? Maybe. Who knows? I'll know better afterward. I'll, uh... Be in New York for a concert sometime in the fall. Would you like me to come and visit you if you're still in the hospital? No, Francesca. No. But I... Do you remember when I told you if I had a life to offer, you're the kind of a woman I'd offer it to? Yes, of course. Then wait till that time comes. I don't know how long it'll be, but... One day, I'll come back here, and we'll talk about it then. If that's the way you want it, David. Yeah, that, that's the only way it can be. All right. And now I, I've got to go. David, would... Would you kiss some of the loneliness from my lips before you go? Francesca. Goodbye. I'll be waiting here for you.
I'm sure I speak for our audience when I congratulate you on a great performance. Ken, it's nothing but a pleasure to play a role that appeals to you like David did to me. He's one character I won't forget for a long time. We won't either, Lee. And I know you'll join us in our thanks to our maestro, John Guarneri, for his inspiring concerto, composed especially for this program. Lee Tracy will be back with a word about next week's program in just a moment after this message. Young men and young women throughout America can be of real service to their country serving in the United States Army. By enlisting now, they have a choice of several branches of service. If a young man volunteers for infantry, he'll receive expert training in many fields. He'll learn about motor mechanics, intelligence, communications, and all about modern weapons. For the tops in service, he has the opportunity now to become a paratrooper. Find out all about the infantry and other branches of the Army at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy in the cast were Helen Christian, Joe DeSantis, Miriam Wolfe, Jack Jason, and Bill Lipton. Concerto was written by DeWitt Kopp. The music was composed and conducted by John Guaneri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. We look forward to your being with us next week for another Proudly We Hail program. It's entitled Sins of the Fathers. It's a gripping story about one of the major social problems of today, the problem of what to do about sons of criminals. I'm sure you'll like it. Goodbye. <laughs>